All right, so welcome back. So this is Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios and Idaho Art Classes. Today we're going to be talking um, and reviewing about the Loomis method. So we had a video that I that I did where we talked about the perspective of the head, how that's important to understand, and that's a big part of the Loomis method. If you don't understand the boxes and how to create them and identify them, you need to learn that. We also talked about perspective middle versus measured middle. And that is, is that when we have boxes, you can take any plane and using X marks the spot, corner to corner, corner to corner, you get an X and where the middle of that X, that's going to be the middle of your plane. Now this is a one point perspective box, which means this front is facing towards me and, and is not it's lined up truly perpendicular to my eye, or 90 degrees. So this is a true square. So the true middle is what we call measured middle. If I measured from the red line to this corner, it should be the same as if I measured from the, the red line to this corner, because this plane is essentially, it's not in perspective. It's lined up 90 degrees to that line of sight that we've talked about before. However, sides that are going away from me, this is a two-point perspective box, so this goes to the left a little bit. This goes way right. This side and this side again are going away from me. This side, this side are going away from me. That side's going away from me. So when I use X marks the spot on these sides, I'm going to get something called perspective middle. And that is, if I measured from the corner to that red line, and then I measure from the red line to the to the back corner, I'm going to see a difference, and that's because of perspective, or in other words, foreshortening. As this goes back in perspective, the length shortens. So it shortens to the middle, and then from the middle to the back. So that's why from the middle to the front is always longer than the middle to the back because of foreshortening. That is called perspective middle. And so we talked about taking the head for Loomis and we do our circle, we, we would then draw the circle, we draw our ellipse, we would then decide the angles of the right side versus the left side and we would touch a plane that touches our ellipse and then comes over and touches the outside of our circle to create this little window. And once we had that window, we talked about using X marks the spot again, and that this should be um, perspective middle. Now, these little windows that we were talking about are lined up almost, they're pretty close, they're like this. They're almost, this is a two point perspective box, but it's almost one point. This is true one point, that's that plane that's 90 degrees to my line of sight, so it's, it's not tipped away from me at all, it's a true square. These are pretty close, so we said, all right, well, this perspective middle is almost the same. And so then we said, well, we'll just, we can move it over a little bit for perspective middle. And that's what we talked about last week, and these were just some different, this is, these are all three quarter views, but they're just showing the idea of putting that plane on where it touches the, our lips on this side, touches where the head ends on that side. We still have our hairline, our brow line, our nose line, all that good stuff. And uh, so we talked about all of that, but there was so much information I threw at you last week, I saved the best part for last. So there's one, so we were moving this over. Oh, I'll just arbitrarily move it. Well, there's a way of finding the exact perspective middle. And what we've done here is presented us with a bit of a problem that we need to solve. When you get used to solving the problem, this will be close enough and you can just move the mark slightly. But here's the problem, or here's the last step for what we need to create perspective middle. So if we look at this head here, and maybe we'll just go ahead and move that up a little bit. So if we look at this head right here, this is in profile, and this is where our plane touches our ellipse. And you can see, hopefully, that this is our circle. 
And so this plane is actually slicing off an arc. It's actually inside the head. That little window that we created. Okay, that's our problem. The window that we have, because we touched it to the ellipse, is slicing off an arc. It's slicing off a piece of our, of our sphere. Uh, this is drawn like a, like a circle, but it's supposed to represent 3D, so I'm calling it a sphere. So, that's part of the issue. Now, the, the solution, the blue line shows the solution. This is how we're going to do this. This is, our, this is our little plane touching the face, but it's slicing into the head. This is a plane that's touching right here at the outside of our circle. Obviously, there's a difference. So we need to find that arc, and the way we're going to do it is with this plane, where these two dots, now this one, I don't know how that got up there, so I moved it down, but these two areas, this plane and this plane is the same height, so what that means is that if I took this and I have the correct arc, that will push this out past this plane and get us to how, you know, where it's out on the outside of our circle once again. So in profile, this shows where this is cutting, and the purple line shows where it's cutting, and the blue line shows where we need to be. And here's how we're going to do this. So this right here has the answer. Both of these are showing it. After I've taken and cut my plane right here, it touches our ellipse and it touches the outside. Now remember, be, because this is touching this ellipse, it's slicing a piece off. And so how do we, how do we, how do we rectify that? How do we solve that? How, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to take, um, and we're going to take basically this is part of our answer. We're going to take our ellipse and that arc, and we're going to take this arc as the same. Now, this is a bigger arc, but they're the same arc. This is something that you need to understand and learn, is that if I have an ellipse that's a, let's say it's a 30-degree ellipse. Ellipses are measured by degrees. If I have a 30-degree ellipse, and I have an ellipse that's one inch, that's 30 degrees, and then I have an ellipse that is three inches, that is 30 degrees, they are, you know, the one, one is one inch and the other is three inches, but the curvature of the two is about the same. Because, so this would be the same ellipse, only I'm imagining it as being bigger. Okay, so I'm taking this, this smaller ellipse right here, I'm trying to imagine that smaller ellipse as being, you know, a much bigger ellipse. But I'm trying to follow this arc. And what I do is I follow the arc through this point, the top of our plane here, and I bring it down through the edge of our plane here. What is this? This is where X marks the spot. I draw a straight line through X marks the spot. That gives me the point here and the point there. And then what I do is I take that big arc and bring it through those two points, trying to match this arc to this arc. So they're supposed to be trying to be about the same arc. Take some practice. But when you do this, what happens is that you will, it will push out and I will intersect this center line here. This purple plane right through here is showing that the, the, the arc, the slice, coming off that flat plane. So this is touching the flat plane. This is the arc. This is showing you, this is in perspective, but this, this right here is the point of the perspective of, the, of that sphere. This is where our dot should be. This is true perspective middle. So again, this is, what we did was just cut this off, right? And we said, well, that's a problem because before we were coming through that plane, if I go through the middle here, this is cut off and literally cut into my sphere. And so to solve that and to get true perspective middle, we still need to put our plane down. 
we still need to take that plane and use X marks the spot. Mark X marks the spot, but then we're going to take a line, top and bottom, through there to give us two points, a straight line. So this is giving us those two points, and then matching this arc, I draw through those two points, and that gives me the true perspective middle. So this right here, and again, now it, I've got some different colors here. I was trying to show this is the little fin that's rising up off this flat plane. This is actually the, the round part of the sphere and our perspective middle. And this person's head is, is turned quite a bit. This, this head, if we measured it, this is two-thirds and this is one-third because of the, the way this head has, has turned. Okay, this head is, is a pretty extreme three-quarter. In other words, we're almost getting towards, you know, like a, a, almost to a profile. If we turned any more, it would be a slight profile. Um, that's why this is so much, and we can see it here maybe a little easier, but that's why this length is one-third of this length because the head has turned more. The more the head turns, the further this line moves out until it's in profile. This right here, the outside edge of that profile, is the center line. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the center line from here and put it out there. How do we do that? X marks the spot, take a line through the X marks the spot where these two points hit our plane come through there with the arc. Now, remember that this angle and this angle and this angle are all going to be the same. There might be some slight diminishment for those that have no perspective, but it's going to be so subtle and so soft that if you're not careful, if you, if you make it too much, it's going to look like a caricature. And so we've just kept them truly straight. So once we go ahead and create X marks the spot, put that straight line, find the two points, draw through those two points with an arc that that is the same arc as that it's bigger but it's the same if we look at this versus that it looks to be about the same arc only this one's larger so again we have to know ellipses for this to work and we wrap that around and once we've done that we now have true perspective middle and again this has some several different colors but this right here the center line is here then it becomes a pen line then where it intersects this middle line, it just drops straight down. So it's blue here, and then turns red there. But in other words, this thing comes around the head, around the forehead, hits the true, the true um, center, or the true perspective middle, and then it drops straight down. That's my center line for the head. And I've done the same thing over here. Now this is turned more towards me. This is almost a straight view. It's a very soft three-quarter. It's almost straight on. And that's why this little fin, this purple fin here, is much smaller. It's more in perspective because this head's now turning to face me. Once the head goes into a full frontal, you, won't, you wouldn't see this fin at all. Everything flattens out. So when you have uh, perspective, it would just flatten out as a straight line. We wouldn't be able to see this little... This is where it touches the flat part. This is where it's arcing out. Again, this is much smaller than this over here because this head is turned more towards me. Because it's turned more towards me, everything is compressing into perspective, into foreshortening. This is getting smaller. We see this plane the most in profile. We don't see it at all in, in a full frontal. This is a slight, slight, slight three-quarter. And so we see just a little bit of it. How did I get this once again? Brought my three lines. Now remember that this line right here represents the box because this is the left side versus the right side. This corner here, or in this case, this corner here, but in this one, it's going to be more like, almost like this one, where it's almost a front view, but not quite. And so this right here is the right side, and this right here is the left side. And so what we did is we brought these straight lines. To the, or these lines are supposed to be parallel and straight, brought them to, and I dropped a straight line there, brought them to where they intersected along that corner because this right here is supposed to be the, cor the, the front part of the head versus the side of the head. Brought a straight line, 
change the angle because there's going to be different angles on the right side than the left side because of perspective. If you don't know about perspective and, and that sort of thing, learn it. Go and learn one point, go and learn two point. It really helps with Loomis. You cannot do Loomis or Riley unless you know about and understand perspective, linear perspective. If, you're, if you've been letting you know, some vector program or something like that draw all your stuff and you don't understand perspective, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And you won't be able to use Riley very well. But if you know how to use a perspective, if you've drawn with it, whether it's by hand or whether it's with a Wacom tablet, you know, in some sort of bitmap program, um, you're going to be able to, and you understand it, you'll be able to make boxes no problem, you under, you'll understand perspective no problem, and all of a sudden Riley will make, and Loomis, will make so much more sense. So again, what we're doing here is just basic pers perspective construction. We know that when, the, because of this, our little profile, we know that when this touches, that's now sheared off a big flat section on the head. And so what do we do? We, we go ahead and make our little plane. It touches here, touches there, create X marks the spot. This is X marks the spot. And we drew a line straight up here till we got a little point and drew a, a point straight down here till we got a little point. It's supposed to be straight. Now, if this was tipped back in an extreme way or tipped forward in an extreme way, it, it might have an angle, but right now this is straight. Once we've done that, we have our little point here, our little point there. We brought the arc. Again, we're trying to echo this arc here, so we went ahead and echoed that arc. And there's a one point. I believe I must have erased this, but we brought this arc through there until it touched there. And then as it come down, it would come and wrap underneath. Right through there. So this is our ellipse. Looks like this is actually tucking too far back, I think. This actually needs to do something about like that. That's better. So again, part of this is just, we're just, we're, I'm not getting out ellipse templates or anything like that. I'm just feeling my way through an ellipse. But once we've got that, once we've got this ellipse that wraps around our sphere, wraps here and it wraps here, this again, I think it's cupping just a scotch. There we go. But now where this, if we brought this arc out, which we've done right there, hits that little center line, which would be the brow line. This is the hairline, the brow line, the nose line. Where this arc hits right there, that second point, that's our true perspective middle. This is not the perspective middle. Well, it is for that flat plane, but that flat plane is chopped off our sphere. So once we come through there with our arc, that pushes it out. It moves it over to the left. That's now our true perspective middle. This is now our true perspective middle. And see if it's closer to us, it's just a little bit. If it goes, turns more away from us, it's more. So if I had this one right here, these are kind of very similar. This is where it's almost one point. Uh, so this one is like that one right here. This one's almost like this 45, 45, two point perspective. So if I was, you know, because a lot of times people will do this until they can do it intuitively, you know, and then once they can do it intuitively, they just go ahead and, and will mark it very quickly and move on. So with this one, I might, I'm only going to be moving a little bit, so my perspective middle might be, you know, like right there, just to the left of it, just a tiny bit, maybe an eighth of an inch. Whereas this one over here is going to move over much more, like maybe a quarter of an inch because of the fact this is turned more, this is turned less. How do you kind of build a, a, a feel for it? You want to do 20 or 30 of heads like this, where you're actually defining the plane, getting perspective middle, putting down that center line, finding those points, echoing this arc through there, finding true perspective middle, doing it the long way. That's what this is. This is the long way, the long hand version. Once you've done that, 20, 30, even, even if it takes 40 times, you'll start to build a feel for where that perspective middle should actually be. And that's what people do that have drawn for a long time. They'll just, they'll draw their head, draw the jaw, and throw down a center line. People are like, how are you doing that? Are you guessing it? Well, it is a bit of a guesstimation, but it's a guesstimation based on understanding. 
And that's a big difference between guessing something by understanding what it should be versus not understanding what it should be at all and just taking a shot. It'd be like trying to hit a target with your eyes closed. You have no idea where it is, but you're just going to shoot anyways. Or, you know, loose the arrow or whatever, you know, whatever you're you know, throwing or what have you. Um, whereas, you know, if you, if you know where, let's say you've been, that's probably a, a poor analogy because we need sight for those. But if you're, if you're guessing, like if, I've, if you have people that have um, done measuring for a long time, like uh, my dad was a cabinet maker, so he did lots of measuring with cabinets. And he could, he could look at something and go, yeah, that's such and such. He could go rattle off what it is. And he'd be close. He'd be within a 16th to a 32nd of an inch because his eye was trained. So he was guessing with knowledge versus someone who has no idea what an inch even is trying to guesstimate a distance. That's, that's a better analogy. That's what people do when they're drawing. They've done it enough, the formal way, that their guesstimations or intuition, as people might call it, is a much better guesstimation because it's coming from knowledge, a place of understanding. Not a place of, I don't know, but I do know, and this is about where it should be. All right, and that's how pe masters and people that have drawn for, that are really good at portraits do it. Now, certain people have really good eyes and they can do it without even trying or what have you, but those people are very, very rare. Even in the professional world, those people are very rare. Most people are using, um, and that's why people will use Loomis. Some people don't need, they don't use Loomis, while well, they jump really quickly into this, sort of this little helmet shape and away they go because they don't need to break it down. There's others that are professionals that are really good artists, but they have to bring a little bit more of their draftsmanship in it because they have a you know, poor eye, or maybe they have one eye that doesn't see as well as the other, or maybe they have eye distortions. There's still people that, can, that will work around that using other methods. Um, Loomis really, really, really helps. And Riley, they're the same. They start with the circle, cut, cut the piece off the circle, you know, find your thirds, you know, and then drop, you know, cut this in half, drop the third, find the jaw, you know, your basic Riley or Loomis head. But this is for finding our true perspective middle. If you do this, you will really be able to take advantage of Riley and it will open up its benefits to you. So go ahead and give this a shot. I encourage you, if you're serious about drawing people, do this at least 30, 40 times. Not in one sitting, but do it over time. Take, you know, like do five of these a week or 10 of these a week. And that way in four weeks or eight weeks, you've got, you know, 40 under your, bre your belt. In other words, you've drawn all those different drawings and now it's easy. Now it's no problem, you know. So go ahead and give this a shot. I wish you guys all the best. So you guys go ahead and stay creative. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.